Welcome to 4 Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Hobby Boss's 135th scale. This is the AAVP71A Rams RS. Well, basically, it's the sort of Marine Corps sort of amphibious assault vehicle. We've seen these things. They've been floating around since Iraq and all the rest of it. They are beautiful pieces of equipment. Lovely bit of armor. It's half boat. It's half tank. It's half armor personnel carrier and everything else all in one. Very, very nice kit. And I must admit, I've been wanting to build one of these for quite a while. And this one came up on offer not so long ago. And I thought I'd get it. That was a year ago, <laughs> before I've actually got around to actually reviewing this. But we are here now. Recently, we reviewed some very big hitters in the actual um, modeling community. We've seen King Tigers with full interiors from Tacom, Rifield Models, full interior uh, Tiger uh, in 135th scale. So actually, this is quite nice to go back to Hobby Boss, see what they're doing, uh, and have a look at one of their kits. So. Beautiful box art, because let's face it, this is the environment this thing is designed to be. I know often you see them in deserts and all the rest of it, but plowing up a beach is really where we love to see this particular vehicle. So we've got a little bit of information down there, that beautiful um, European one camo sort of scheme on this, and then obviously working our way around the kit. So yeah, kit number for this one is 82415. Okay, uh, and on here, as obviously it's pointing out, we do get some nice photo etched grills, which obviously add a lot of weight to the actual build. So, in the box, now I haven't been in here at all, amazingly, when I've had it almost a year. Need a bit of the box, my head. Oh, we're stuck. Shows I haven't been in here because I can't get in it. No, no. Okay, no one panic. I can't get in. I haven't been in the box, it's glued itself in. Never mind. As we can see straight off the bat, what a fantastic box. Absolutely rammed with sprues. Uh, twin bag by the looks of it, right the way through. And boy, have we got a lot of sprues going on down in here. We can see it looks to be a very detailed kit. We've got track pads, interior floor, we've obviously got running gear, things like that. The photo etch. Two big bits of photo etch, actually, and that's actually got some heft to it as well. Some nice thing. Some limited decals, and then obviously we've got the hull of the beast uh, and more tracks down in there like that. We just offload the box. Okay, to start with, the instructions. Old school instructions. Very old school instructions. Crikey. Very, very old school instructions. Okay, let's try and work our way through. I don't think I've seen this type of instructions in quite a while. Staples are obviously an extra. Anyway, a uh, little bit of blurb about it, obviously, usual things. Working our way through, pretty standard for all armor. We're straight into the actual road wheels and working through that system. Okay, then we've actually got the uh, the paddle system, is it? I think they have on this one. Uh, that are gonna go down on there and being fitted in the actual drives, popping those in. Obviously, it's got a couple of holes in the bottom. Now, they're saying repair those. I don't know if you'll see them, uh, if they're at water leaks. Uh, but that's putting those in and then obviously we've got the little paddle systems being fitted in and then obviously we've got all the running gear the various bits and pieces being fitted to the underside as you'd expect all the wheels being put on looks like we've got separate trink, uh, tracks i don't know if they're linkable obviously we'll have a look at that in a moment and then we're working our way generally through the build and as you can see it does look to be quite in depth uh, there's a lot going on with this particular one beautiful job that we've actually got a full interior as well so we don't only get obviously the crew compartment uh, we actually get the actual um, uh, cabin in the rear full details down there we've got benches various items being put in there which is a really nice touch now hold on we have to right the two for six there we go. okay and then <clears throat> Back onto this side, we can see more detail being put in there. Actually looks like a very, very nice job right the way through being fitted into this with all the internal details put in this one, as you can see. So it is a full vehicle, full interior as well as exterior, which I must admit surprised me because I thought it was just the exterior. Um, and then again, beautiful details you can see all the way down on this one, making actually the uh, compartment right the way through. As you can see, absolute stacks of stores and equipment and everything else. This is stuff being fitted to the roof. Uh, fitting that in and then we're going to go over to this side okay and then as you can see absolutely round i paid peanuts for this kit 
I'm amazed there's so much in here. This is absolutely amazing. Okay, so generally, as you can see, all the cleats and the, the lumps, bumps, and everything we expect on armor being fitted all over the outside of this with the armors, uh, up armoring. Uh, this particular type looks like it has that sort of mortar uh, type roof to it where it sort of peels open. Okay, right the way through. The photo etch uh, glue, uh, sorry, photo etch parts being put in by CA glue as it's pointing out down in here. So that's replacing those. That's very nice indeed. And then right the way through. And it looks like this actual um, compartment at the back you're not actually going to glue it so it will be be able to open and close as well for this sort of you know top hatch being fitted right the way through so that's all of those going down in there more photo etch showing you to be bent in to give the covers uh, over the exhaust and things like that as those are being fitted in and then we've got the rear door being fitted through with the hatches and the latches and all the good stuff like that okay then we're on to this side and again, beautiful work. The amount of level of detail that's in this kit is just truly amazing. So lots of different stuff going down on here. Various things for the gun system being put on for that top turret, putting all of that together. And obviously it's full, so it goes right the way down into the interior as well, into the fighting compartment, okay? And then fitting that on. And then it's a case of the rear door being fitted through. And they're saying no cement as well, so it looks like they are gonna be a loose fit for open or closed deployment on that and we've got the front ramp being fitted through on there like that that is absolutely blown me away i'll be honest with you when i um got hold of this kit i'm not saying my ex expectations weren't high but they were by no means thinking this is probably the weirdest set of instruction fold up i've ever seen um but i wasn't expecting that level of detail in this kit because if I remember rightly, I paid, this is genuinely from a shop as well, no more than £20 for it. So that's why I'm somewhat amazed of how much is in here. Fantastic. So anyway, uh, green. Got a lot of to say there. All camo. Got to be camo, isn't it? Absolutely lovely in that one. But if you wanted to, you could obviously put it to desert and other marks and things like that. Let's face it, they're all different colours these days. Then we have this. And again, this is one of those situations where in your mind, I have it roughly a scale and a, what it's gonna be, this, that, and the other. And here we are. This thing is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. I don't know how big I was thinking, but you know, to put this in perspective, this thing's gonna be what, 23 centimeters long by the time it's put together. It's a nice lump. And because it's Hobby Boss, you almost lower your expectations. And probably why I'm very surprised about it, um, you know, that I wasn't expecting too much. So to be pleasantly blown away by the level of detail. So as you can imagine, this guy has got points all over it. And when we say points all over it, we mean literally everywhere. Okay, so we've got some nice little details going down all over that one. Ready all for putting in the running gear. These saying about clean out, they're not holes all the way through. It's just the actual mold injection ports. Um, so a tiny little bit of filler down there, you'd be good to go. You might notice we've actually got some nice well beading being put down on there. That's not too bad at all. And generally, I don't know, it's just really nice. It's loaded with ejector pins all over this, but then I assume this is an older model and it probably took a lot to get out of the mold. Okay. How much of this is going to be hidden by interior detail, I'm not too sure. But generally you can see in there it's not too bad at all. Some very nice parts in all of that. Then looking at the top, you can see this thing is absolutely loaded. We've got some anti-slip textures on here, which is a nice one. Uh, and again, all these mounting points for all the different equipment and stowage items. This thing is absolutely loaded. Again, very nice surface texture. I do like the anti-slip. It looks to be pretty much in scale to my eye. So actually I'm quite happy with that. And also the welding, although it looks quite crude, it's probably about right. Again, you get the welding around these areas and all these different bits and pieces, and it actually doesn't look too bad at all. You know, just the weld beading like across these edges down and here and around actually don't look too bad. So yeah, again, I think this is what it is because I had no expectations for this kit because it was cheap. I'm very, very <laughs> blown away by it really. Okay, so into the bags. Dual bags for everything. So at least you haven't got a million bags all scraping around in one. Okay, so down in here. Um, probably start down at the bottom, might be easier. As you can see, very nice job. All the parts. Again, this is Hobby Boss and it's slightly older. I don't know how old this kit actually is. But, you know, older Hobby Boss was always a little bit clunky. It's a little bit heavy plastic. It's not going to win any awards or anything else like that. It's got burring on it. You can probably see the burring down here on this piping and things like that. It's all going to need a little bit of cleanup. But 
again, we're talking this thing about price. You know, these, this, the price of this is negligible compared with a lot of modern kits. But generally, you can see on these parts, very, very nice indeed. So again, on this guy running through, just the wiring and that, you know, it'd be simple enough to liven all this lot up and then just come through the, the things. You know, no problem. It's clunky. It's almost like sort of old school when you've been building, and to be honest, I've been sport recently building some very high quality kits um, that, you know, you tend to forget the old stuff. Like I've been building a lot of Tacom recently and Meng and things like that. And you're thinking, yeah, no, that's fantastic. That's a fuel sprue. Um, but now, you know, you're seeing this stuff and you're thinking, yeah, I don't know, but it's practical. It, it, it is at a price. It works quite well. You know, it is very, very nice indeed. Again, you know, the actual pins as they're holding onto the parts, they're big and thick and chunky. You're going to need a good pair of sprue cutters to get through these, let's be fair about it. And some of the locating areas are a little bit dubious, like they're a bit odd the way those go in. But, you know, generally other things are okay. It's just that some of these smaller parts, like these grab handles, you can see the actual injection points, the actual gates themselves, they're very big. So you just have to be very careful trying to trim this little guy off without taking it with it, okay? So just be mindful of that. Um, just be one of those things to take your time. You know, don't rush it. <clears throat> as soon as you start hacking through it, it's gonna be, we've got that one wrong. It's gonna be a, a bit of a problem. So, okay. So we've got a nice big sprue down here with these front uh, deflectors on here, sort of air, water dynamics, hydrodynamic, that's the word I was looking for. Okay, so again, very nicely done. No problem with any of these parts. The exhaust system there, the parts on the top. You know, you can't fault it really. Again, it's that thing where I'm probably being driven a little bit because of the price is so good on this particular kit. It's no problem at all. It's nothing where you're thinking, oh, I spent a fortune on it. I want perfection. This, you really don't mind. Okay, again, I can't find any real problems again you you're looking at it and you know things are screaming out to me but i can forgive the kit for a lot of these different things purely because of its uh, stature and price and and things like that so again nice job on these no problem you see i can't see any miss molds or you know sink marks or anything else like that it's all pretty good it literally is this thing of the sprue gates are just a little bit heavy the sprue gates were finer and perhaps you had a little bit less burring on this it'd be damn perfect kit the ejector pins you know you might be able to see you can see the shine to them that's where they're somewhat cleaned up so you know somewhere in the mold somebody's actually cleaning up the actual uh, pin marks as they come through that's why they look slightly more polished there okay and we've got the rear hatch so we've got the internal details as well as the external there to give you an idea and again, because it's armour, you can do so much with weathering and different fashions of weathering. So, you know, obviously we're talking pigments. You can come in here with things like that, as well as washes, but also texture. Texture in armour, I think, is just one of those things that everybody's happy to splash washes on and stuff like that. Sometimes, though, they just need that sort of, you know, the grit and grime look is sort of missing from it. Okay, this guy should probably come out of the sea, so he's not going to be too much apart from a bit of sand. But when they've been trundling around an environment for a while, they are going to pick it all up. So, again, we've got some of the, the sort of smaller stowage items on here and shovels and stuff like that. And generally, all looks to be pretty nice indeed. No problem with any of these. As you can see, these stowage items at the top, we've got shovels, picks, pry bars, things like that right the way through the hatches are a little bit you know as you say we're not expecting miracles and stuff but it's all here it's all practical and it is all very very nice okay so we've actually got the turrets uh, and some of the uh, equipment down in here on this one so again really nice stuff all the way over this the magazines even down to the checkerboard on the floor very nice it's sharp crisp it's going to be one of those things, it's covered in ejector pins, but it's working out if the ejector pin is somewhere that matters, that needs to be dealt with, or is it somewhere which is going to be hidden by a part going over it. That's going to take you a little bit of time just in test fitting to work out. So you test fit it, 
get away with it or no we're not going to have to then go off and sand or fill or whatever you're going to do with it match pair of sprues on this particular one obviously for the wheels and again it's just lacking a little bit of detail it's just not as sharp as we've seen recently but it is all here still so i wouldn't worry too much about it and again by dry brushing washes a little bit of texturing going down onto this guy i think i have no problems at all with it okay so we've got the crew cabin floor and the front plow by the looks of it so the floor itself isn't textured i thought it might be just something on here it's got texture in the plastic but i don't think it's actually a you know thing going through but generally the floor equipment over here with the the bolts and that that's all pretty good a little bit of anti-slip on here that's actually quite nice all of those parts no problem with that at all and the last one we've got that front area the cleats various things on this one again it's nothing flash but it's nothing bad okay <clears throat> so clear parts let's face it they're going to be just be clear anyway because it's hobby boss they're always pretty good we've got a little bit of photo etch so we've got the grills you can see them down on there and on that side <clears throat> we've got markings which are going to be tiny not much going on down there as you can see sorry because it ran the wrong way okay so that's not too much okay and then we have the track so multiple bags of tracks i'm just going to open one up and then i'll re-zip it up i just want to know if it's actually a working type track or is this just a glue track it doesn't mention anything about it being workable but you never know so i'm just going to test it Just pop two off. Is that supposed to be there or not? What do you reckon? No? Okay, because it could bite. Now, is this just a simple push or is there anything here? No, I don't think there's anything there. Unfortunately, I think this is going to be just a case of glue it. I hold my expectations because. When we built the Bradley, that was, I was like, oh, so I bought a load of frawl tracks for nothing. Would you, lo and behold it, no, these are workable. And that's what we're saying. Sometimes these things can actually come back and bite you because this is a workable track, ladies and gentlemen, on a kit like this. See, Hobby Boss were doing it years ago. Separate track pads though. So we've got the rubber pads here for the road work uh, and everything else. But look at that, workable track in here. As I said, the big thing about this kit, going into this review, I paid peanuts for it. Always fancy one, one came up in a sale, I grabbed it. It was as simple as that. And I think I paid something like 15 quid for it. 15 quid for this, absolutely beautiful. Let's face it, there's armour out there which is now going horrendous in prices, 75 quid uh, and upward. This guy, 15 quid for all of this plastic and it's got workable track. Really, you can't go wrong. 